it's time to stir the pot. Because if I'm not stirring the pot, I'm not doing my job. You're a voice actor. You're an entrepreneur. You're a VOpreneur. Welcome to the Everyday VOpreneur Podcast, your guide through the business of voiceover. Your number one marketing tool is your voiceover demos. When you're posting them online, you want to be sure they're playable on any device and with any browser. The Voice Sam Player does exactly that. Sign up at msvo.me slash msvoicesam and receive three months of Voice Sam for the price of one. Sign up now at msvo.me slash msvoicesam. The VOpreneur Podcast. Hey, it doesn't suck. Not as funny as Conan. Not as cute as Seth Meyers. Not as smart as Colbert. But he's one of us, and that counts for something. Here's Mark Scott, the original Everyday VOpreneur. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Everyday VOpreneur Podcast. You're a voice actor, you're an entrepreneur. Put those things together, and you are a VOpreneur. The purpose of this podcast is very simple, to help you become better at the business of voiceover. Thank you so much for listening every week where fine podcasts are given away for free. And thank you so much for sharing your reviews as well. I just want to share a couple of them with you very quickly. Mark's weekly podcasts are awesome and very practical. A must subscription if you're serious about your VO career. And I absolutely appreciate that. Organized, engaging, backed up by data and experience, Mark always gives you something immediately useful to apply to your business. Usually it's multiple somethings. He learned his lessons from the ground up and shares them freely Make this a part of your weekly VO business routine. Thank you so much for that review as well. And I appreciate every time you have an opportunity to leave a review for the podcast wherever you listen, whether that's on iTunes, on Spotify, on Podbean, on Stitcher, on Google Play. Thank you so much for the reviews. Thank you so much for listening and for your ongoing support. I'm going to try to give you something that you can work with this week, although this particular episode, it's going to be a little bit different. It was actually an unplanned episode, but it stemmed from a post that I put up on Facebook a few days ago, and I'm going to read that post for you word for word just to give this episode context. So here's the post that I created in the VOpreneur Facebook group, which, by the way, if you haven't joined yet, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash VOpreneur. Here's the post. Facebook doesn't need another post for voice actors to complain about rates on a particular job so we can pat each other on the bum, throw our arms up collectively in outrage and offense, and complain and cry as though someone just stole our family puppy. What Facebook needs is posts from professional working voice actors crushing their businesses, not even giving so much as an ounce of thought to the lowballers. Posts that are going to build up our industry and its talent rather than keep it in a perpetual pity party. Posts that will educate, empower, and encourage each other to operate businesses like true VOpreneurs, rather than hobbyists and amateurs hoping to make a quick buck. The dollar store will always exist, but that didn't keep Calvin Klein from selling a boatload of overpriced underwear. You'll always be able to buy a Kia or a Mercedes. Educate each other. Offer exceptional work and service. Let the clients who want to pay in great exposure go find someone else today. Every bit of energy devoted to the victim complex becoming more present in our industry won't solve your problems or the industry's problems. Yes, this post is blunt. Sometimes people need blunt. I don't apologize for it. What do I always say? A good coach doesn't tell you what you want to hear. They tell you what you need to hear. Will you be part of the solution or part of the ongoing problem? That was the post. And I'll be honest, I wasn't really sure what kind of response that it was going to get because it tends to be a little bit controversial. If there is one thing that I have noticed about the voiceover industry, particularly in recent years, it's that there is nothing that we love more than to join a online pity party on the topic of rates. And it's getting old, and it's getting frustrating. And apparently there are a lot of you that agree with that sentiment, because the post actually went on to become one of the most reacted to posts that I have ever shared in the group, with a lot of great comments and some interesting discussions as well. 
And I want to dive into it a little bit deeper in this particular episode of the podcast because there's a couple of things that I think that are really important. First and foremost is the concept of the perpetual pity party. The reason why the Vopreneur group got created on Facebook in the first place was because I got tired of all of the negativity that never seemed to stop in so many of the other Facebook groups, Facebook groups for voiceover. And that's not to say that there wasn't great content going on in those groups, and there still is great content and great conversations that happen in those groups, but there's so much negativity. And it really did feel like a perpetual pity party. And the problem was when I would get into these groups, maybe a couple times a day, I'd check them just to see what was going on. And I would find that it was affecting my attitude. It was really just bringing me down. It was making me grumpy. It was making me frustrated. It was getting me bitter about the industry and about the clients and about all the stuff that was going on. And, and so I decided that I needed to get out of that environment for the sake of my own sanity and for my own productivity. Because when I get down, when I get negative, when I get upset, when I get frustrated, I just don't do work as well, if I even do work at all. So I decided to create a group that I wanted to build a different kind of atmosphere in. And that does take a lot of work on my part. It means that I really have to monitor things. It means that sometimes I have to make difficult decisions about posts being removed. It means sometimes I have to have awkward conversations with people about why their posts were removed. But I do this because, A, I wanted a more positive environment, and B, I think we all need a more positive environment because this whole perpetual pity party thing that is going on is just getting really old. And I feel like it's bringing down the industry as a whole. And it reflects in a lot of different ways. You've got veteran talent who are getting bitter because they've seen all of these changes that have taken place in the industry over the years. And so now veteran talent are constantly whining and griping and complaining, which really doesn't set a great example. When you've got new talent coming in who are looking for mentors and looking for people that, that can educate them, people that they can teach them. And so now you've got new people wondering why the old people are so grouchy. And so they're out trying to figure out how to do this on their own. But then they make mistakes because they're new. And so they maybe accept rates they shouldn't accept or, you know, accept practices that they shouldn't accept. But they don't know any better. But they can't talk to anybody about it because all the grumpy veterans don't want to have that conversation with them because they're too busy feeling sorry for themselves about all of the changes that have taken place in the industry. And so then we just get this circle. We get this circle that somewhere along the line, somebody is going to have to break. If we're going to shift the industry, we have to start by breaking that circle. Why have we developed such a victim complex in the voiceover industry? And I know this is going to be unpopular, and I know this is going to be controversial, and I know this is going to upset some people, but if you stop and look at it from the outside, I think you'd see it very clearly. Every day, there's another rant about rates, and maybe it's rates in general, or maybe it's rates on a particular job, but there's always another rant. Sometimes there's multiple rants a day. Every day, there's another rant on casting sites. We have decided that Voices.com and Voice123 are the enemy and they are against us. And so we constantly are venting in social media about this is the latest thing that this site did and this is the latest thing that that site did. And, and so now the casting sites are against us. And then we get upset because clients are out there trying to source voiceovers. And, and this is something that they don't know anything about. I mean, here's a great example for you. I have a garden in my yard, and last year, I decided that I wanted to put in a water feature. Now, the owners that had had the house previous to me had a great big beautiful pond in the center of the garden, but as they got older, they filled in the pond because it was too much for them to maintain. But I decided last year that I was going to put it back, and so I started by digging a giant hole. They told me that everything for the pond was still left behind. All I needed to do was get the dirt out. So I started digging this hole. And what I realized very quickly was that the plumbing was still there for the pond. And the electrical was still there for the pond. But the liner 
was not still there for the pond. The other thing I learned was that the county where I live, the soil is basically like sand. We can grow vegetables like nobody's business, but trying to build anything structurally, so to speak, forget about it because one rainfall in the sand just all gets washed away. And so I very quickly realized that for this pond situation, I was in over my head. And so at the end of the summer last year, after I finished digging the hole, I just gave up on it. I decided I needed to let it sit for a bit. I needed to let the ideas percolate. I had to figure out what it was. What was the solution going to be? So last week, I went into a garden center, a local garden center, and I told them about my situation. And they connected me with their landscape contractor. And the landscape contractor came to my house and she walked me through exactly what she would do to put in a beautiful pond and water feature back in my garden. I needed her expertise because I didn't have a clue. I didn't know if this was going to cost me $5, $500, $5,000, $10,000. I didn't know. I, I had no clue where to even start. I didn't know how to build it. I didn't know how much labor it would take. I didn't know how to put in the liner. I don't know how to set up all the pumps and the filters and all. I just, I don't have a clue. I needed her expertise. And so I had a phone call and I had a conversation and she educated me. And now I have a better idea of how this all works. And I'm very excited about the new pond that's going to go into my house. And the point of this story is that voice buyers that have never bought voiceover before, they need you to educate them. They need you to sit down and have a civil conversation with them over the phone or over coffee or over email or over instant messenger, and they need you to educate them. This is why rates are the way that they are set. This is how usage works. And not get defensive and not get cranky and not talk to them like they're stupid. You just got to sit down and have a conversation and educate them. The vast majority of the times that I have these conversations with the clients that I'm working with, they understand and they accept it. They just wanted somebody to explain it to them. So when I reach out to somebody with a quote, because they've come to me and said, you know, I, I got a, a 60 second video that I'm going to put up on my website. And I get back to them and I tell them that the quote based on what they're asking for in usage is whatever, $350 US. And they come back and they say, $350 US? We're talking about 60 seconds of voiceover. Like, isn't that like getting $350 US for 60 seconds of conversation? What you need to understand in that moment is that they're not trying to be a dick. They just don't know any better. They're uneducated. And so at that point, it becomes my responsibility to sit down and explain to them how I come to that number of 350 and why that quote exists the way that it does. And once they're educated, then they get it. Then they have the opportunity to take it or leave it, at which point my work is done. If they accept it, great. I do the job. Everybody's happy. If they decide that that is outside of their budget, that's okay. We move on. My life goes on. I start looking for the next client. What I don't do is go onto Facebook and start ranting about this stupid idiot that reached out to me for a quote and tried to lowball me and blah, 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 because that's not what happened. But also, that's not productive. And this is the victim complex. This is the victim complex that is becoming rampant in our industry. And it's making me nervous because the longer that that goes on, the worse that it is going to get for the industry as a whole. The more that we develop this attitude that we are victims, that the rates are against us and the clients are against us and the casting sites are against us, tell me how we win in that situation. Tell me how that plays out ultimately to the favor of the voice actor. Because I don't see it. I don't see it. And so that was what this post that I put up on Facebook was all about. It was about awakening people to the narrative that is becoming dominant in the industry. This negative perpetual pity party and the victim identity that we are taking on as an industry. This is why I want to turn to Facebook and I want to see people who are successful and people who are influencers sharing those stories and building us up. 
I want to see the veteran voice actors encouraging and mentoring the younger voice actors, helping them to grow the industry in the right direction. I've said before, as a firefighter, I was a volunteer firefighter for 17 years. And one of my responsibilities, and this exists within the fire service, it is the responsibility of a veteran firefighter to make sure that rookies become veteran firefighters. We're talking about life and death situations that firefighters deal with. And it is the responsibility of the veteran guys who have lived through those situations to make sure that the rookies have the information that they need so that one day they become the next batch of veteran firefighters. We need veteran voice actors to stop whining and griping and moaning and crying and feeding into this victim complex and instead start building up each other, building up the industry, and encouraging and empowering the new talent to do it better. And some of you are going to say, but Fiverr, but the, but stop. All of those outside external factors are always going to be there. There's always going to be a dollar store, but that doesn't stop high-end retailers from existing, right? That's just the way it is. So I don't choose to focus on Fiverr because my clients are not on Fiverr. And what I mean by that is the clients that I want to work with are not on Fiverr. So I'm not losing anything on Fiverr. And I can tell you many stories of clients that I have worked with who have come to me after booking on Fiverr and then recognizing that you get what you pay for. And so they hired me because. One particular client, actually, had hired four different voice actors off of Fiverr and still didn't get a professional recording. And that's when he found me doing a Google search. And that's when he reached out to me and I gave him a quote and he didn't flinch. He said, OK, he understood what he had gone through on Fiverr and why it worked out the way that it did. And we did the job and everybody was happy. Everybody won. And he ultimately came back to me for several more projects. I've got all kinds of stories that happen like that. When you start blaming all of the outside forces, it becomes more of that woe is me narrative. It becomes more of that victim complex narrative. Well, I can't have a sustainable business because Fiverr. I can't have a sustainable business because declining rates. I can't have a sustainable business because casting sites. I can't have a sustainable business because agents. I can't have a sustainable business because what else have you blamed? Who else have you blamed? I don't know about you, but every day I get on the internet and I see voice actors who are crushing it. And you know what I don't see from those voice actors who are crushing it? I don't see them blaming anybody for anything. I don't see them whining griping, complaining. I don't see them feeding into the perpetual pity party. I don't see them putting their victim ID card on and wearing it proudly. What I see is people running a business and running it professionally and taking ownership and responsibility for that business and going out and finding the clients and doing the work. That's what I see. That's what I do. It is not easy to do a podcast and maintain a Facebook group and offer coaching and run programs and, and do a voiceover business and, and all of the things that I do. But I do it because I love the industry. I love what the industry has done for me and for my life and for my family. My family and I live a life thanks to voiceover that I never would have lived if I was working in radio still. And so I feel like I have an obligation and, and I don't say obligation in a negative context. I mean, obligation, like I have, a, I have this desired responsibility to give back to that industry and to do everything that I can to see that this industry of voiceover continues to thrive and to grow. And I'm not one of the top tier talents. You know, you're, you're not hearing me on national commercial campaigns. But I'm making really good money, doing work that I love, working with amazing clients, 
clients who consistently pay me good rates, great rates, fair rates, rates that I don't have to argue and nickel and dime over. What you don't see, because I don't broadcast it, all the time, I have conversations with people and, and provide auditions and quotes for people, and the budgets don't pan out. That's just the reality of doing business. You know, this landscaper came to my house, spent an hour with me in my yard, in my garden, looking it over, coming up with a plan, a vision, you know, creating this vision for me to help me to see what could be there instead of a, a giant gaping hole in the middle of my garden. And then she told me that she would go home and she would sit down and, and you know, plan it all out and put together a quote for me and, and get back to me with the information. And she did all that never knowing whether or not I was going to take it or leave it. That's just part of her job, showing up to people's houses, having conversations, coming up with designs and ideas, painting pictures for them, and then providing quotes. And maybe she books the, the job, maybe she doesn't. She doesn't complain when she doesn't book the job. She just goes and finds the next client. That's what I do. I don't rant about every misfired rate on Facebook. Because if I did that, I wouldn't have time to go out and find the jobs that are paying fair rates. How does that help my business? It really doesn't. The reason I bring this up, and, you know, somebody will say, well, who died and made you king of voiceover to, to have this conversation? Nobody. Nobody did. I just happen to have a platform and have decided to, to use it to try and do something, do something good, do something productive. But I bring this up because once upon a time, I was a victim. Once upon a time, that was the narrative that occurred in my life. Everything was against me. Everything that possibly could go wrong was going to go wrong. And even when things went right, I would still somehow find a way for things to go wrong. Because I wasn't happy unless I had something to complain about. And not that complaining made me happy, but just that unless I had something to complain about, I felt like I had nothing to say. I needed it. I thrived off of it. And it wasn't until somebody came into my life that helped me recognize that narrative that I was actually able to do something to start changing that narrative. And those of you that have known me for a while, that have listened to the podcast or, you know, that you've been around, because I've been doing this for a few years now, you've watched my videos or participated in my blogs and courses, and maybe you've seen me at conferences and stuff like that. A lot of you are probably thinking, what? Like, you're so positive. And you're right, I, I am now, but I wasn't always. I needed somebody to come into my life and identify that narrative for me so that I could start doing something to change it. And so that's what this is about. That's what this episode is about. It's about hopefully getting you, who are listening to this podcast right now, as an individual, but also as a member of a larger collective community, to recognize this perpetual pity party that exists in our industry, to recognize this victim complex that exists in our industry and hopefully start doing something to change the narrative. One at a time, one voice actor at a time, if we start to do something to change that narrative, I believe with all of my heart that it will bring about a significant shift in our industry. I really do. You know, when we stop feeling like the casting sites are against us and, and we start figuring out ways to work with them, picking the good ones, the ones that are trying hard, the VO Planets, the Bidalgos, throwing our support behind them, working on educating our clients on the alternatives that are out there. That's when we'll start to see a shift. It's when we stop crying about all of the low paying rates and recognizing that we offer a valuable service and that even though the dollar store will always exist, there will always be people who are looking for higher value goods. That's you. That's me. I don't care who's hiring who on Fiverr. I don't need to hear another story about a low-paying job on Upwork 
Here's an idea. If all the jobs on Upwork suck, what if you get off Upwork? And then you don't have to see all those jobs that suck. And then you don't have to be upset about it. You don't have to get bitter about it. And you don't have to go on social media and complain about it. And, and just that one thing alone could start to shift your attitude, which could start to shift your narrative. And then maybe when that narrative starts to shift for you, it starts to shift for the people who are around you. You know, we've all heard the saying that we become like the, the five people that we spend the most time with. So if you're spending all of your time in these voiceover communities constantly participating in the perpetual pity party, if you're spending all of your time contributing to the posts that are griping about this and complaining about that and whining about another thing, that's who you're going to become. Maybe you already see it. Or maybe by the end of this episode, you'll see it. Or maybe you'll never listen to this podcast again. And you'll send me angry emails, which is fine too. I can take it. But if we can identify the narrative, we can start to shift the narrative. And if we can start to shift the narrative, good things are going to start happening. I ended my post with a question. Will you be part of the solution or part of the ongoing problem? And that's how I'll end this podcast. Are you going to be part of the solution? Are you going to stop participating in the pity party? Are you going to stop being a victim and start standing up for yourself and your business and your industry? Are you going to start educating, empowering, encouraging? Are you going to take responsibility as a business operator and step up as a VOpreneur? Make your business better. Do better for your clients and watch how that starts to spread in ways that you can't even see or imagine yet. Or are you going to continue to sign in every day to Facebook, participate in the rants, feed the pity party, join the pity party, invite your friends to the pity party, suck them down the rabbit hole, allow yourself to get frustrated, discouraged, upset, annoyed, Carry those feelings into your auditions, the auditions that you're already pissed off about because the casting sites are against you. You're going to just keep being part of the problem. The choice is yours. I'm not your mom. I'm not going to tell you what to do. I just wanted to call it out because I feel like it's about time that somebody did. And I think, I believe that our industry deserves better. Let's change the narrative. Let's make it better. Thanks so much for listening. I'll catch you on the next one. The Everyday VOpreneur Podcast. Available everywhere fine podcasts are given away for free. Mostly, we think. Your number one marketing tool is your voiceover demos. When you're posting them online, you want to be sure they're playable on any device and with any browser. The Voice Sam Player does exactly that. Sign up at msvo.me slash msvoicesam and receive three months of Voice Sam for the price of one. Sign up now at msvo.me slash msvoicesam. And scene. And that's a wrap. Thanks for hanging in. Thanks for hanging out. Want more VOpreneur goodness? Jump online at vopreneur.com.